Let's move on to the next. Design and build a portal for contributing te teaching content for school education. Mentored by Mr. Pradeep Tiwale and manage, managed by Mrs. Kiran Khosla. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today we are here to present our project, which is a portal for contributing teaching content for school education. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Professor D.B. Fatak for letting us explore new horizons. Further, I would like to thank our project manager, Dr. Kiran Khosla, our project mentors, uh, Pradeep Tiwale for their crucial guidance. So thank you. These are our team members. So today we'll be talking about our project scope, uh, the tools that we have used for our web development. Then we'll have a demonstration of our website. Then the challenges faced by us and how we overcame them. And what we have learned in past two months. And finally, the future enhancements. So in a country like ours, there are many uh, underprivileged children in remote areas who do not have access to quality education. So what if they could get all the uh, required educational content at one place? I mean, whether it be the animations, PDFs, videos, anything, all at one place. And that too contributed by renowned and learned professors. So won't that be great? So in order to uh, bridge this gap, we have made an effort by creating this website called Akash School Education that can be used for content management. So these are the tools that we have used for our website development. We have used Python version 2.7. We have used Django version 1.5, which is the most stable version of Django at present. Well, uh, Django, we have used Django because uh, it is an open and free uh, web framework that is used to create a website, dynamic website. Uh, mostly, uh, it uses the MVC framework. Uh, M stands for the models, that is basically the database. V stands for the views, that is basically the templates. And C is the controller that controls the logic between the views and the templates. And in Django, we do not have to write the SQL queries. We can use the Python code uh, so in order to extract the data from the database. Uh, for uh, uh, database, we have used SQLite, uh, but Django supports multiple database, so we can switch to MySQL if the uh, size of the database increases in future. And for front-end, we have used Bootstrap. Um, it is a theme for the front-end theme we have used because it saves a lot of time. It is easy to customize, and also it is responsive. That is, you can view our website on mobiles, um, tablets, and any other handheld devices. And we have used Git for efficient project management and proper coordination. So now I request my colleagues to give a demonstration of the website. Good evening, everyone. Uh, now I'll uh, give you a quick feel about the look and feel of a we uh, website. As you can see, this is the home page of a website. Uh, what our website actually intends to do. So scrolling down, I have uh, two sections out here. One is the latest upload and scrolling down. I have a few dynamic data displayed out here. The first one is the number of classes in which we have got the contribution. The next one is the number of subjects in which we have got the contribution. And the next one is the number of uploads. Here we have the section of the latest uploads. Here we are displaying the latest five uploads by the contributors, which has been reviewed by at least three of our reviewers. Uh, one of our latest upload, I'll be greeted with a page, a web page in which uh, the, there'll be a detailed description about uh, the content, basically. So uh, as you can see in the above, so if I scroll up, there will be the subject name displayed, the topic for the subject displayed and the class corresponding to that subject. And uh, here we have incorporated a feature of language. Uh, we can have multiple uh, uh, languages for our website like English, Hindi, Marathi. The contents may be in different languages. So here is a brief description about the content and here are the actual contents. If I open the PDF file, I can view the PDF file. I can as well as download the PDF file. I can save it and I can view it. And if I go back, I can see the video as well. Here is a video corresponding to the topic. Here, this is a video. So if I go, uh, go back to the footer section of my website, here we have the GitHub link uh, where the entire code for the website has been hosted. And as well as the About Us page. If I click on that, I'll be greeted with the About Us page, which gives a detailed explanation about our website. 
So coming to the content part, here I will be uh, displayed with a drop down menu for choosing my language. Here I have, uh, we have just given three languages till now, uh, but in future if you uh, want to incorporate more languages according to the number of content which has been contributed to the website, we can have more languages as well. So we have given that flexibility. So if I click on English for example, here uh, there, are, there are many, many contents in the English. So these are all contents in English. Uh, we have a table out here which consists of the class. The classes are being sorted and the subject, the topic, the brief summary which a contributor has to mention about his upload and the various uh, files which he has uploaded. So as you can see uh, the sign, the symbol of cross. So it means that there is no video PDF for the animation file respectively. So if I click on any of the topic, for example, biogeochemical, uh, here I'll be greeted with the same detailed topic page as uh, you have seen in the latest upload. And if I go back, uh, so we have also incorporated the concept of pagination. We use JavaScript for that. Suppose if my number of topics increases a screen for length, then it will go back to the new tab. If I click on next for suppose, then uh, the corresponding next topics will be displayed. Uh, yeah, so we also have a contact us link. Yeah, this is a form. So the capture is, uh, has not been displayed due to net, net issues. So it displays only when we have net connections. So if any of the student has any of the query regarding any of the content, if he has doubt or he wants some new content to be uploaded by the contributor, he or she can fill up the form. Uh, he can enter his name, email, and message. And then he can submit, and the corresponding uh, contact us uh, mail will be sent to the administrator. This was what you have seen in the front end. Now let's have a look on the back end, how this contained data is coming on the contained page. Because this is a filtered data. So we have in our side, we have a contributor and a reviewer. Firstly, if a person thinks that he has the study material, he wants to contribute to our society, he can come and register. There is a register option. There is a register option for a reviewer as well as contributor. We have got a form for registration, which in which consists of a username, first name, last name, email, password, profile pic is an op uh, optional, and a validation file for him. Uh, whenever a contributor register, a mail, mail is sent to the admin, then admin will check his validation doc that yes, he, if he is a suitable person, he has a proper qualification, then yes, he will allow him, yes, that you can apply. After that, uh, he will activate, then only he can log in. Same is the case with the reviewer. Now let's log in and see how the contributor profile looks. Suppose I logged in uh, with, a, uh, I have a contributor already in my site. I log logged in with his name and password. I also have a forgot password option here. See, this is how when he logs in, he sees the classes. Uh, these are the classes in which he has contributed. That class, you can see class eight, class nine there. And down one more section is there of the profile section. That is his profile image. He has an option of upload more, edit profile, and change, change password. If he want to upload more, he can go to the upload more link. There is a form in which he selects the language, class, name. Suppose my top, name is science, topic is corrosion, and uh, I want to select uh, just animation. Just you told, OK, I want to give only animation. I just go to animation, select uh, animation, and just upload it. After the uploadation, uh, so summary is must, he should give the summary. Uh, suppose he gives something in the summary and just he uploads it. What happens after the uploadation? First of all, he will be able to see this, see in this class, in a particular class in which he, in science he has uploaded something. That's what he uploaded now. Just uh, animation is displayed. This was what he is uploading, okay? And what happens now? This content will go to the reviewer's profile. There he will see that, yes, this is the new content. This is still unapproved, so I need to have a look on it. Further, let's have a look on what else uh, user uh, contributor profile is having. He has an option of uh, edit profile. And moreover, uh, what a contributor sees, a contributor sees here in his profile is what all the contribu contribution he has made. Overall, he can always scroll through the site with the, all the content, all that which a normal user does. Apart from that, he only sees that whatever he has contributed. Now let's have a go to the reviewers part, how he reviews the content. Let's log out and log in with a new, new account of, a, of any reviewer. Suppose I log in with uh, some account. The same, the forgot password and all options are same for reviewer too. See, 
he is also seeing the classes corresponding if i go to this classes i will see the inside the subject corresponding to this and in subject i will see the contents okay this is the content which is still unapproved okay he has a button of approve go to profile here there is a class okay this is subject corresponding to class 9 these are the content which are still unapproved and uh, suppose if i click on this pdf it gets downloaded let's go back to the reviewer page he have a look he read the summary he sees the content if he thinks that no the matter is not appropriate i cannot approve he just can comment on it so that a contributor can read it and modify or can edit his content and upload it later on yeah Me, no simple see this comment will be viewed by contributor so this is all about reviewer and contributor part and rest we have on home page a docs link which com consists of the complete report here, here we have the user guide and all the with all the snapshots of our site if uh, our user is having any problem he can view it and see how the sites work or he can use it after that we have a link of uh, user profile where there is we have given the all the contributors and all the reviewers uh, for a user to have a look that yes who are the who are contributing who are reviewing the sites and all that uh, moreover we there's we have given a team that's our team so that uh, for any further problem in our site if we are having they can easily contact us so that's all so now let's have a look on the future announcement and what we learned portion now coming to the challenges that we faced during the course of our project uh, the first challenge was that uh, uh, for zeroing in on the uh, web language that we will be working on so we has many options like uh, drupal joomla and django but we zeroed in on django because uh, it is very easy to uh, it is very easy to develop uh, web uh, web development using django because we don't need to write sql queries in that and moreover it is uh, and using django uh, we can do very good web development uh, and yeah another major problem is that integrating the web modules like we all were working on different modules so at the end of the day integrating the whole was a major issue so that was very tedious so what we did was we used a version control software git uh, using that uh, we were able to uh, integrate our pages very easily so now the things that we learned is first the technical learning we learned python programming django and uh, git html css javascript and uml diagrams and the coming to the non technical learning Uh, we learned being a team player, working in team. Uh, patience was a major issue that we have learned, and uh, time management. We also learned time management in IIT Bombay during the course of the project. In the future enhancement enhancements, uh, one of the major issues is the user interface in uh, various languages, which has to be uh, improved on. And uh, currently, we are having only the English language interface for even the Hindi and other other languages, uh, like the tables. What you saw, everything was coming in English, but later on. one could modify them to some different languages and the entire and en entire thing entire interface could come in some different languages so that could be one of the improvements that could be done then uh, there could be facilities for quizzes and uh, evaluation tests for the students so, uh, likewise uh, contributors uploading contents for uh, subjects and topics he he can actually uh, put up a set of 10 questions per per week so that the students can even take those uh, take those quizzes and then answer them and then uh, the contributors also have to give the answers to that uh, those questions so that uh, when the students complete the quizzes then they will have a uh, overview of what they have understood uh, in that topic and uh, how well they have learned throughout that topic through then uh, this discussion forums can also be implemented this this is similar to like uh, uh, having a uh, doubt session so on a concluding note i would say that um, this is a wonderful pathway for yeah references This, these all are the references which we have been taken and on a gun that that's it thank you